Okay, so hi there, my name is Samantha Robertson. I'm from Kingston Health Sciences Center. I'm a pharmacist, so I am here to talk today about the management and consequences of drug-drug interactions between uh, nermotrelvir and ritonavir. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right either, but, and systemic treatment for cancer. Um, I completed this study along with two other clinical pharmacists from Kingston Health Sciences Center, Brianna Genge, as well as Tessa Seneker, who is also here right now. Uh, no conflicts of interest for me. And to give a little background, as everyone in this room is probably already aware, uh, nermatrovir ritonavir is used in the treatment of COVID-19 in patients at high risk for progression to severe disease. Um, and amongst other DDIs, uh, ritonavir does inhibit CYP3A4 um, ver very potently, um, giving rise to increased serum levels of C3A substrates, which could give rise to potential increase in toxicity from these interactions when they're given concomitantly. And systemic treatment for cancer already have such a high burden of toxicity, um, so it's very important that we develop our knowledge and uh, develop our knowledge of these drug-drug interactions between systemic treatment for cancer and neurotrelvir or ritonavir. So we designed a retrospective descriptive study that took place at the Cancer Center of Southeastern Ontario, or the CCSEO, which is a part of Kingston Health Sciences Center. Um, we had a time frame, study time frame of approximately 10 and a half months from mid-April of 2022 to late February of 2023. Our primary study objective was to determine the proportion of CCSEO patients who were on active systemic treatment for cancer, who were prescribed nermotrelvir or ritonavir, who had a clinically significant drug-drug interaction between uh, the nermotrelvir or ritonavir and their cancer treatment. We determined the clinical significance of these drug-drug interactions using a guidance document that was created by pharmacists at our center in collaboration with pharmacists at Princess Margaret Hospital as well as Toronto General Hospital. And if the medication was not listed in that resource, we used the Liverpool COVID-19 interaction site as a secondary resource. So if the interaction was described as anything other than besides, or anything other than no interaction expected, so a green interaction on Liverpool, um, then it was considered to be clinically significant. For each clinically significant drug-drug interaction, we also aim to describe the expected outcome of the interaction, as well as the mitigation strategy recommended by the pharmacist in that case. We also had a couple secondary objectives. One was to describe the proportion of the uh, clinically significant drug-drug interactions that were determined to have appropriate management recommended by a pharmacist. Management strategies were deemed appropriate if they were in line with the same guidance document that I talked about earlier. Um, or if the recommendation followed management strategies not outlined in that guidance document, but that was described by, in primary literature and cited by the pharmacists in that case. We also did conduct a secondary toxicity analysis that was conducted to determine the proportion of patients who experienced a new or worsening toxicity after nermotrelvir or ritonavir prescription. And we did this by reviewing patient charts for evidence of newer worsening toxicity. So our study consisted of 66 patients, um, most of whom were age, older, they were age 60 and above, pretty well represented between females and males, and most of them were on a palliative intent uh, cancer treatment regimen as opposed to a curative intent. Hematological malignancies as well as solid tumor cancers were well represented in our study. For our primary objective, you can see in the pie chart here uh, that we found that over half, so 51.5% of patients of, in our population did have a clinically significant drug-drug interaction, which is pretty as expected with available literature. So this slide um, represents the actual drug-drug interactions instead of the patients. So the red circle on the outside shows that all 40 clinically significant drug-drug interactions identified were expected to have an outcome of increased toxicity from systemic treatment for cancer. So prior to engaging in the study, we did identify three categories of expected interactions for the potential drug-drug interact, or sorry, expected outcomes for the potential drug-drug interactions. Um, so this was including cancer treatment would actually decrease the efficacy of nermotrelvir or ritonavir. Um, so this would be the case if nermotrelvir was a victim of enzyme induction 
and the other category was nirmatrelvir or vitonavir would decrease the potential efficacy of systemic treatment for cancer. However, we did not encounter any of these uh, such interactions when we completed our study, so all of them were in the same category of expected to increase toxicity from systemic treatment for cancer. The next purple circle on the inside um, represents the management strategy, if it was appropriate or not, when recommended by the pharmacist. And we did show that 97.5%, or all but one uh, management strategy recommended by a pharmacist was deemed to be appropriate. And finally, the green circle on the inside uh, does show the different management strategies. And we did categorize these into different interaction or different management strategy groups. The majority of clinically significant drug-drug interactions were managed by holding or delaying the cancer treatment. So this happened in 33 of the 40 interactions. Five of these interactions were managed by dose adjusting, the co-medication, and in two cases, there was no intervention made in these clinically significant drug-drug interactions. One of those two cases was the interaction for which we de deemed it an inappropriate management strategy. And in the other case, we did consider it appropriate um, because there was no intervention needed at that time um, due to the actual timing because it was a weekly dexamethasone dose and the pharmacist had made a documented note that they were going to follow up prior to the next cycle. So this figure is just a table showing the comeds that were most commonly seen implicated in these clinically significant drug-drug interactions. The most prevalent was dexamethasone. And this was dexamethasone of doses of 20 milligrams or higher that we considered clinically significant. So systemic treatment for cancer dosing as opposed to uh, antiemetic dosing we did not include. Um, followed by ibrutinib, fortezomib, and olaparib. This is our secondary toxicity analysis data. So we included all patients with a clinically significant drug-drug interaction, except for one patient who was excluded from the toxicity analysis, um, and this was due to a lack of documentation at the time of data collection. Um, this gave us 33 patients in total to include in the, toxicity, in the toxicity analysis. And as you can see, 15 of these patients did not have any new or worsening toxicity. 18 patients were identified to have a new or worsening toxicity after nermatrovir vertonavir prescription. Um, however, when looked at this more closely, only nine of these interactions were likely to be related. Nine of these, uh, sorry, toxicity, nine patients with toxicity, uh, we actually thought it was possibly related to the interaction. And finally, one of these, of the nine that we thought possibly related were severe toxicities and I'll discuss that on the next slide. So an interesting note um, as well. Oh, I'm sorry. So an interesting note was that there's two patients taking a brutinib for the actual management um, of this was to hold uh, as per our guidance documents. Um, but in, it was actually just dose adjusted to one sixth of the dose um, based on primary literature cited by the pharmacist. And so we deem this to be an appropriate management strategy. Uh, and to note, neither of those patients actually did experience any toxicity. So as for our discussion, um, consistent with previous literature, there is a high prevalence of clinically significant drug-drug interactions in this population. Um, and this does highlight the importance of de developing management strategies for these clinically significant drug-drug interactions between systemic treatment for cancer and nermatrovir or vitonavir, especially when considering the already high burden of systemic treatment for cancer uh, toxicity. Another note is that pharmacist-led management strategies were appropriate in almost all cases. And then the severe toxicity that was mentioned earlier was actually a CTCAE grade three peripheral neuropathy that had worsened post uh, nermatrovir ritonavir prescription with uh, the comed being bortezomib. So while bortezomib was held in accordance with guidance documents and therefore considered to be an appropriate management strategy, Due to the long half-life of bortezomib and the time frame of administration, um, we believe that the bortezomib was actually still present in significant concentrations um, at the time of the nermatovir vitonavir administration. So this could have led and potentially did lead to a uh, toxicity 
toxicity where we thought that the management strategy was appropriate according to the guidance documents. However, it looks like they were, the interaction actually did happen and potentially led to toxicity. And so while we can consider holding or delaying safe management strategies in most cases, this may not be enough when co-medications have long half-lives. And as discussed previously, the abrutinib uh, dose adjustment strategy appeared to be safe in two patients for which, it, um, for which we used it in. Most toxicities were non-severe and would not prevent the use of nermatolvir or vitonavir when indicated. And finally, a few limitations of the study would just be the small sample size, um, the retrospective nature, and then also the possibility that the patients did not follow the recommendations or take the uh, nermatolvir or vitonavir at all, as it was a retrospective chart review. And just some conclusions, clinically significant drug-drug interactions are highly prevalent um, between nermatovir, vitonavir, and systemic treatment for cancer. Pharmacist-led management strategies were appropriate in almost all cases. Most toxicities were non-severe and would not prevent the use of nermatovir, vitonavir when indicated. And finally, when drug interaction resources recommend to hold a co-medication, inclusion of a washout period or a co-medication half-life um, may assist in clinical decision-making. And future directions, uh, further studies obviously warranted in larger and more diverse populations. And more studies also warranted in patients for whom longer courses of ritonavir um, is indicated, as all these were only the five-day course for um, COVID-19. Um, and this could also include people living with HIV. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you.